Upheaval, Reckoning, Chapter 33, Beloved Heavenly Basin, this was supposed to be a forgotten corner of Equestria for Torado, a grave for some lifetime he wanted to leave behind. Yet here he was coming back to it like a lovesick foal. The still air and the permanent twilight were suffocating. Memories of times when he happily came to this place, often unannounced, dug at old wounds. That must be why Black Rose insisted on meeting him here. She knew this place unbalanced him. She was banking on him being disturbed enough to be vulnerable. The ruins hadn't changed. He doubted even a speck of dust had been moved since he last came here. The water around them was mirror smooth and the night sky above was bereft of clouds and stars alike. And there she was, standing at the corner of where her tower used to be. Silhouetted by moonlight, her coat gleamed in the silvery illumination. Black Rose looked every inch an eloquent princess. She wore a black, long-tailed coat with a gold trim and the legion's emblem proudly emblazoned across the left side of her chest. She was wearing the uniform of the legion's high commander, a rank he had created just for her. Her crimson mane spilled across her neck and past her shoulders, the locks curling at the tips. As she walked closer, Tirado caught the faint scent of mountain wildflowers. I come here for answers. She comes dressed for a party. Unlike his sisters, Tirado had never been one to appreciate dressing up. When a celebration came up, he looked forward to the food, the booth, the music, and the lively conversation. He didn't give a crap about what kind of dresses the mares were wearing. He especially didn't appreciate dressing up when there wasn't an occasion. She looks so lovely. Torado frowned at the unbidden thought. I'm so glad you decided to come, beloved, Black Rose said. You offered some interesting things to get me here, Black Rose. Torado replied. If you deliver even half of those, I'll be glad I came as well. Black Rose's steps were tentative, but deliberate. As the distance between them shortened, Torado focused as he would with an enemy's approach. He raised himself high without lifting his legs, hoofs ready to strike and spells at the fore. Black Rose stopped just several feet away, a hint of disappointment crossing her face. Where do you want me to start? she asked. Torado would have insisted on learning Rainbow Dash's fate, but that was two days ago and information had been retrieved about her situation. Zed left one pony looming across his horizon. Gravitas, he said. What do you know about his movements? You overestimate me, beloved. My network does not extend to the eternal herd. Neither does mine, Torado said. It was true. He knew a lot of elecons in the eternal herd, but few would readily socialize with a rebellious prince. Gladio was willing enough and Magnus had always been ready to share information with those who asked, but that was the extent of it. But you mentioned him. What is he up to? He will be coming here soon, Black Rose replied. Torado's eyes widened. General Gravitas, hero of the battle for Alice, hero of the first strike, the Elecon who vanquished four of Oceanus' six handmaidens, and easily one of the Eternal Herd's greatest warriors. Gravitas was coming here. A long, long time ago, that Elecon was his hero. Celestia gushed over Lexarius's oratocoric prowess, especially when the issue of mortal ponies came up, but he read and reread each account of Gravitas' exploits. He shook his head. The time of hero worship had long since gone. This was also Gravitas, the Elecon who wanted nothing short of complete extermination for all mortal ponies. The Elecon Celestia detested and spoke against over and over when Lexarius was no longer around. How can you be so sure? he asked. He hasn't been appointed to do anything in this world and protests will emerge if he crosses without permission. A thousand years ago that may have held him back. Black Rose replied. Her characteristic serene smile slipped. He is growing impatient. My plans have left him a great opportunity to seize control over Equestria's fate, but his window is quickly closing. 
I cannot imagine him and his allies waiting until Celestia recovers her strength and Equestria stabilizes. How did you come across this information? Simple. From Gravitas himself. I must start at the beginning or this explanation will be a very slow move from one dramatic revelation to the next. Please indulge me, beloved. I know how you hate theatrics. I'll listen, Tirado replied. Thank you, Black Rose said. Did you ever wonder how I was able to perform the ascendancy ritual you created for me despite having destroyed most of it? No, Tirado replied. You had done the impossible yet again. At that point, the only thing that I wondered about was my incessant underestimation of you. I'm flattered, but I didn't accomplish the task on my own. Gravitas has been doing more than speaking out against mortal ponies. He found out about your research in the Eternal Hearts library, and he contacted me while I was piecing together the ascendancy ritual. Black Rose brushed a stray lock of her mane from her face. Tirado recognized the slight hint of embarrassment. His faithful student prided herself for being subtle. Being caught by Gravitas would have been a humbling experience for her. I had expected him to disturb my work and alert you so I can be punished, Black Rose went on. Imagine my surprise when you offered to fill the missing pieces for a price. Tirado didn't have to. The surprise that struck him at the moment more than gave him an accurate estimation of what Black Rose must have felt. It didn't make sense. Finding out that a mortal was trying to become an alicorn would have offended Gravitas greatly. Why would he choose to help Black Rose? Unless... Gravitas offered a completed ascendancy ritual, Black Rose smirked as she went on. At least his very convenient version of it. Slay an alicorn and absorb her power. Yes, he said, her, and he certainly offered no ideas on how to reach the moon. Obviously to further his own agenda, Tirado said. He fought to quell his anger at the mere thought of Gravitas wanting to harm his sister. If Celestia was censored by a mortal, it would only prove his point that all of Oceanus' children are too dangerous to spare. And I told him just that, Black Rose replied. To his credit, Gravitas did not take me for a foal by trying to pretend otherwise. He told me that this was a necessity, especially with the Ninth Rebellion closing. He even promised to cover up my part in the deed and personally welcome me to the Eternal Herd as an alicorn. Black Rose smiled. He was very solemn about it too, almost believable. Tirado could only agree. Gravitas would never accept that a mortal could ever become an alicorn. Once the deed was done, he would have denounced Black Rose to the Eternal Herd and finished her off to hide his involvement. Finding out that Gravitas had been far more active than he or his sisters had anticipated was troubling. Yet you went along with his plans, he said. Do you honestly believe that I would work with an alicorn who wants to destroy what I've tried to protect for so long? Black Rose asked. Isn't it enough proof that I haven't killed Celestia? The tremble in her voice brought on old aches in Tirado's chest. He shoved them aside. Where do all of your recent actions fit in? Gravitas will come here under the pretense of dealing with the theft of Celestia's power. I have no doubt that he will use the opportunity to execute your younger sister's previous sentence. With Celestia almost powerless, he will send you back to the Eternal Herd for causing the Sixth Rebellion and taking part in the Seventh. That leaves him in full control of Equestria's fate. Tirado remained silent. All of what Black Rose said was true, but that wasn't what concerned him the most at the moment. He was beginning to understand what his former student was planning. Black Rose had fallen silent again. Tirado waited patiently this time. This wasn't theatrix. He could tell that she was reluctant to say so much. Beloved, let me have the foul weapon. No. Black Rose's smile returned. That was quick, she said. Not even a pause for your faithful student? What were you expecting? Tirado asked. Did you think I would even consider allowing any pony to use a weapon that hurt my father? Despite its name, the foul weapon is ultimately a mere tool, Black Rose said. 
With it, I can destroy Gravitas without his being able to retaliate. He will be censored from this world and Equestria will be spared the distractions that a battle with him will cause. Your brother says otherwise. A genuine look of regret crossed Black Rose's eyes when she spoke again. Blue Moon's intentions are misguided, she said softly. There's nothing misguided about wanting to protect you. For the first time since her return, Black Rose's eyes widened with surprise. She let out a short gasp as he crossed the remaining distance between them. Do you think I'm blind? Torado asked. You think I swallowed that nonsense he was spotting about you taking over the eternal herd? He thinks he can spur me to urgency by making your plans seem that dire. I see right through him. His horn glowed and the first few buttons of her coat became undone. And I see right through you. Torado's magic worked not merely as telekinesis. He brushed against the layer of illusions surrounding her tentatively, waiting for her to react. Black Rose visibly tensed, but she offered no resistance as he began to dispel the magic. His lips pressed into a grim line when the image of a lustrous black coat wavered around her chest and revealed the truth. A web of hairline cracks, centered where her heart would be, had begun to spread across Black Rose's chest. They seeped golden light, as if she was a being of radiance barely contained by an outer layer of mortality. She looked away at his scrutiny. You must have known this would happen, Torado said. You are not meant to wield the power of sunlight, no matter how great the need and no matter how high your mastery of magic is. It will burn through you from the inside out. Return it to my sister and leave Gravitas to us. I will not. Don't be stubborn, Torado said. Black Rose didn't so much as flinch. He bit back the rage and lowered his voice. You've been talking for quite a while. Why don't I finish for you? Oh, this will be interesting. How much of my intentions have you read already? You have two immediate goals. Forcibly have Celestia's barrier down to begin reunification by stealing her power and doing it for her and to fully realize the strength of the elements of harmony by throwing them into danger using your thorns. Those are easy enough to guess. Black Rose replied. Yet here comes Blue Moon, your most loyal son, talking about you wanting to acquire the foul weapon, then taking over the eternal herd. That didn't make much sense until Gravitas became involved. You went with his scheme so that he would come here. If you can remove him from the picture, Equestria will be safe from the eternal herd. Torado paused for a moment. Am I right so far? Very close, Black Rose said. You do understand me well, after all. Equestria would be united and, with Gravitas gone, the Eternal Herd will be united in protecting mortals as well. Black Rose nodded, her smile widening. There are two snacks, however, Torado went on. Slaying Gravitas in this world will merely censor him. He'll remain a problem in the Eternal Herd. So you need the foul weapon. You will also be prime example of why mortals are dangerous and should be destroyed. A false Alicorn who dared to steal the princess's power and use Oceanus' weapon. However, the fully realized elements will rise to defeat you. There will be ultimate proof of the true potential of mortals and should serve as enough of a reason to spare Equestria. I could not have explained it any better, Black Rose said. You do understand, beloved. All you need to do is have your agents stand down, make things easier for me and keep the elements of harmony in the dark. No. The smile faded quickly on Black Rose's face. Why not? Blue Moon rejected your plan, didn't he? That's why he came to me with wild tales of you wanting to take over the eternal herd. He feared that I might agree with your plan, so he sought to manipulate me into stopping you. As I said, his intentions are misguided. What if the elements fail? What if all your tests break them? They will die. Black Rose's voice took on a harsh note. They will die slowly and painfully for their incompetence. I will have to wait and be the tyrant if I have to until necessity causes the true elements of harmony to emerge. I will not let you do this, Black Rose. 
Black Rose's eyebrows furrowed, an extremely rare sign of frustration. This is for Equestria's sake, beloved. The Ninth Rebellion is coming and everything must be ready. Then Equestria will have to be ready through some other means. Don't be selfish. Why would you hesitate now? You see how Equestria can be saved and how little the cost compared to it. I am done fighting for an Equestria that can only be saved by grand lies and letting others die. Black Rose raised an eyebrow. You say that even though you threw a baby dragon into the violent heart of his kind's politics? It was Cerrado's turn to crack a smile. Clever Black Rose makes a mistake at last, he said. I suppose a teacher can only be so proud for so long. His face hardened. His answer puzzled Black Rose, but she let the matter go. Why did you even bother coming here? Did you think you could bring me to your side by telling me parts of your plan? I'm not backing away, and neither are you. The next words left Black Rose like a sigh. I still had to try, she said. I knew the chances were next to nothing. I still wouldn't forgive myself if I didn't make the attempt. However, that is not the main reason why I asked you to come here. What is? Black Rose's eyes softened. Torado steeled himself. It was centuries ago when he would fairly melt if she turned that sort of gaze on him. For some damnable reason it felt as if it was only last night. She raised a hoof and touched the base of his neck, which was really as high as she could reach without rearing up. With all that is happening, this will likely be the last chance I can meet you alone like this. Terado answered by leaning downwards so that his snout was but an inch from black roses. The smell of her breath, mixing with a faint hint of wildflowers, was intoxicating. She closed her eyes and crossed the remaining distance, pressing her soft lips against his. He kissed her back, resisting the urge to press forward and gently place her on her back. He unleashed his magic. In the split second between the start of his spell and its completion, Black Rose opened her eyes and jumped back. Her horn flashed as she intoned her own spell. Torado had expected the swift reaction. He also knew what the next spell would be. Black Rose was going to teleport away and he would never see her again like this. A dimensional anchor was too risky to try. As soon as he missed, it would be over. He used the area-centered dimensional lock instead. A dome of gray light exploded from his horn and quickly engulfed the entire island. Black Rose flapped her wings and made a dash towards the edges of the spell. Torado worked on a second spell even as he expanded the dimensional lock as far as he could. An enormous chunk of earth, shaped like an eagle's claw, burst from the ground and made a grab at Black Rose. She dodged it, easily enough, but three more attacked her from different directions. In an instant, the entire island and the surrounding lake had turned into a forest of claw-shaped stone pillars. Black Rose dodged and weaved through them, all the while trying to get past the limits of Torado's dimensional lock. At one point, she unleashed the power of sunlight, shattering several pillars with a blaze of golden magic. Torado easily replaced them. Torado blocked every means to leave the heavenly basin, save for a straight ascent, then raised his stone claws to snatch Black Rose if she attempted to fly up. He held his ground as a great shaft of concentrated sunlight flew at him. The spear struck nearby in a dazzling explosion. Her sunlight spears are unstable. Torado thought. He strained to keep both his dimensional lock and his stone claws going. The entire world was a blur of blinding whiteness and the shadows of his stone claws moving. He extended his tremor sense through the claws and several feet beyond them. He couldn't see Black Rose, but the vibrations from her wings gave him a good approximation. Another sunlight spear struck the ground. This one was near enough to be uncomfortably hot. Either Black Rose was getting serious and about to attack him, or she was finding it more difficult to use her newly acquired power. Yet she's relying on it exclusively. He thought. Black Rose's pride was talking. Don't underestimate me. I can't control this power. The stone claws had cornered Black Rose when she cast one more spell. A massive explosion of sunlight centered on herself forced Torado to shield up. His stone claws shattered all around him. 
He reformed them a second later, but it was already too late. He had felt the great draft she caused when she blasted upwards and out of his dimensional lock. By the time his vision cleared, she had escaped. Torado merely shook his head. He had expected to feel a little angrier, but it was hard to make out the jumble of emotions going through him at the moment. It had always been difficult to treat Black Rose as an enemy, even when he had believed that she wanted to take on Celestia's power for its own sake. Now that he understood her intentions, it only got worse. What hurt the most was confirming what he had been thinking about. Black Rose called him Beloved, but it was obvious that she did not trust him with Equestria's future. Indeed, she trusted no pony but herself with protecting the realm. It was her grand scheme from beginning to the end. Was that the supreme expression of the confidence that he had always admired? Or was it because she was too afraid of being disappointed by any pony any more? His thoughts briefly turned towards a particularly annoying subject. Twilight Sparkle had seen her teacher vulnerable and fallible, yet she never wavered. He felt envious. It was such an odd sensation. He had never envied Celestia for any reason. Not her power, not her grace, not her authority. Of all the things to envy, it was Twilight Sparkle's face. Torado touched his lips briefly with a hoof. Eager to forget that envy, he tried to remember the sensation of that last kiss. He would never be able to reconstruct that moment, even with all his magic. Black Rose promised that this was their last face-to-face -face meeting. Back then, he barely had a second thought about attacking her when he found out about her plans. The outrage had come so easily and the end results did not catch up to him until much later. He let out a sigh and looked around him. His attack had devastated the landscape of the Heavenly Basin. They broke the island into several fragments and blasted the ruins of the tower to the bottom of the lake. So much lost so carelessly, he told himself. He had told his eldest sister about her half-assed plans driving the ones she laughed away. Truth be told, he was worse. There was a future to tend to. Black Rose wasn't going to stop. Her thorns remained on the move and out to get the bearers of the Elements of Harmony. She was still poised to seize the foul weapon and she wasn't going to return Celestia's power until it was too late. The threat of Gravitas hung over him darkly. He needed to talk to his sisters about this. Even the prospect of sifting through what he had learned today and sharing what needed to be shared would be problematic. He doubted his ability to defeat Gravitas in open combat even with Luna at his side, he needed allies or a really effective plan. Or perhaps just a powerful enough weapon. The sun would be rising soon. Perhaps he would see flaws in this one. Black Rose had expended a great deal of power. That final blast of sunlight alone drained her severely. As he prepared a teleport spell, he glanced back at the heavenly basin one more time. This isn't farewell, Black Rose. I promise. Okay, Everypony, in this chapter we actually learn Black Rose's plan. And truth be told, I think her plan is not even a bad one. I mean, there have been some elements in this uh, plan that I don't agree with uh, 100%, but hey, if you're honest, it is not a bad plan. She wants to save Equestria from the threat of the Eternal Herd by making sure that General Gravitas is out of the picture completely. Her methods might be a little rough, but she's doing it pretty well, I think, because, well, she has planned everything, everything, everything out. Um, but I would have done something different if I were Torado. I would have tried, like, um, well, being more gentle about this thing. I mean, trying to uh, bring her to my side and give back Celestia's power and then discuss the eventual, I'm, I say eventual, use of the foul weapon. Not promising anything, but the eventual use. And, if possible, destruction afterwards. Okay, let me know your opinion on that. Sincerely yours, Visual Pony.